Hello and welcome to StarK's monthly webinar held the last Wednesday of every month at noon Eastern. We're here in the StarK offices in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Rabbi Tzvi Goldberg and this is Rabbi Mordechai Frankel. Thank you, Rabbi Frankel, for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Rabbi Frankel is the director of our Halacha Institute where you can get, uh, you can ask him questions on any Torah topic. Uh, the way we, 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 we uh, present it is if you can't get in touch with your own local rabbi, and everybody should have one that they should be in touch with, but if you can't, the time uh, they're busy, you can either email us at, what is it, what's it, halacha, H-A-L-A-C-H-A at star, S-T-A-R dash K dot O-R-G, or you can call us at 410-484-4. Answer your questions. Today we're going to talk about Hanukkah, the laws of Hanukkah, uh, top 10 questions. If you're joining us by, by uh, phone, or you want to join us by phone because your sound is, is, uh, is not 100%, here's the phone number, 218-895-1203. One two zero three, and the passcode is twenty twenty uh, pound. And if you're joining us uh, by web, you're at the at the site learnkosher dot quick click webinar dot com. Learnkosher dot click webinar dot com. I want to announce that in about uh, three two or three months. The end of February, February 26th, Wednesday, at noon, we're going to have a special, but a, uh, a, um, a, a webinar with Rabbi Tendler, who's going to go through a presentation of how to check your fruits and vegetables for insects. So we've got, we have videos, we have pictures, we have demonstrations, and uh, we, we think that that will be something that you want to put on your calendar. And we're going to send out the uh, sign-up information uh, for that as the time gets nearer. Okay, is everybody able to hear? Is anybody able to hear us? Because sometimes we do have some technical glitches, believe it or not. So you can chat with us. On the bottom of your screen, you'll see a chat screen. And, uh, and if a couple of people can hear us, we know that we usually, I usually say if one person can hear, then, then it means it's going out properly. And, then uh, okay, great. Thanks very much. Everybody's an everybody's answering. We have we have uh, people joining us from Canada, from um, from Eretz Yisrael, from Israel, where it is already Hanukkah, right? It's already seven o'clock in Israel, so they've already lit lit the first candle, and uh, sung all the songs and made all the brachas. Um, so let's begin, Rabbi Frankel, with. And by the way, if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, he said, one second, it says the sound cuts in and out. Hmm. But for others, it's working great. Well, if, if, if the sound cuts in and out, and for others, it's, it's working fine, then probably it's your computer, and uh, you may want to join us by th this number that I gave you before, which our tech hopefully can put up on the screen for you, um, uh, because you, if the sound is going out, uh, then... then, then um, and it should be should be fine. So you can give us a ring. Um, yeah, you can if you have any questions, please chat them to us uh, on your screen. We'll be happy to take your questions. And let's begin, Rabbi Frankel. What is the earliest time to light Hanukkah candles? Let's see, it's 12 o'clock here. So can I get a head start right now? I'll go home uh, after we finish the webinar, and I'll light my Hanukkah candles. Is that, is that okay? Um, it's a little too early. Um, the, the ideal time to light. There are different opinions about this. There are the, this is a this is a machlokus among the poskim what the ideal time to light it is. Um, the Shulchan Aruch says that, that, that again, as I think people are familiar with, <coughs> the, the, in the sunset and then after sunset in Jewish law, the sunset and then uh, sometime later, that which is called the sunset is called Shkia, and sometime later is Tzisak uh, when the stars come out. Um, so the Shulchan Aruch says that a person should light at Tzitzak uh, when the when the stars come out, which in America is about 
45 minutes uh, after sunset. Um, however, others, many, many other poskim, including the Vulnagan, disagree and they say one should light at sunset. Um, now, there's a problem with this idea of lighting at sunset, which is that, that uh, the point of having candles, uh, the reason we light at night and during the day <coughs> is because um, during the day it's already light, so the candles don't do anything. So that's why we prefer to light at night. So at sunset, it's still, it, even though the sun is below the horizon, but it's still pretty light. So, um, so the post, the, the, so the, the later post can see that uh, those who say much light at sunset, they don't mean exactly at sunset, because at that time it's not yet. It's a little bit after sunset. So Moshe Feinstein says 10 minutes after sunset. Rabbi Aaron Kartler said 20 minutes after sunset. Um, so again, there are these different opinions. The Shulchan Aruch holds that one should light um, at Tzisak HaChavim, which is like 45 minutes after sunset. Um, according to the according to the, the other post, one should light like 20 minutes after sunset. Um, <coughs> so the, the ideal time to the, the ideal time to light really would be if a person wants to. I, I, I believe if a person wants to cover all his bases and if a person's home and is able to do that, if a person could light uh, 20 minutes after sunset, um, which, uh, which would be I don't know, somewhere around five o'clock, and uh, in Baltimore, in Baltimore, right? right. And um, and uh, a little bit, uh, I don't know. Candle lighting is 4:30 around here, around here. So plus 18 minutes, plus 20 minutes. So a little after five. And uh, if a person can have the, the candles burning till half an hour after Tzisak uh, Echovim, which again Tzisak Echovim is like um, <coughs> um, 50 minutes. If 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 we start to light 20 minutes after sunset. Normally the candles are burning for half an hour. Now you want them to burn till 50 minutes after sunset, and then another half hour. So you want the candles to burn for like an hour. So that would be the ideal thing to do. That's how that's how Rav Aaron Kotler held, is it not? Right, right. That's that's the way Rav Aaron held. Chazanish also held this way to look that so one should light like 20 minutes, ideally, if person's at home. And Rav Heinemann is a student of uh, Rav yeah, Aaron, like so him. he likes that opinion. Right. So you're going to light 20 minutes after sunset and have the the, the candles burn for like an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, the, it's in the middle of the afternoon, it's in the, well, late, in the later half of the afternoon, but many people are out working. Um, for many people, it's not so practical to really light at that time. But if the person is home, that would be the ideal thing to so do. So try to get home and light, what would you say, 15 minutes? 20 minutes. 20 minutes after sunset. And th 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 that doesn't depend where you are. I mean, the time depends where you are, right. but the, right. the, the, the rule doesn't depend. Mm, no, I mean, the right. Aaron Carter said that in America, and the Chazanish said that in Eric Cicero. I they both, okay. both came out to the same number. Right, so okay. somewhere around that, and then to have the, the candles burning for like an hour would be, uh, and that way you have your basis between all the various opinions. So why an hour? So you have 20 minutes, oh, because you want 30 minutes, you're lighting 30 minutes before, before the, before the, the, the real the sunset, and so the sun, before the stars, the stars come out, and another 30 minutes which is after the that, that, because it's supposed to last for 30 minutes, so, right. so an hour. Right. Okay, so most of our candles probably last, or at least people lighting with oil. Right, for sure. They yes. last much longer than than, than, right. than that. Right. Um, and uh, and uh, but the, uh, the the old style candles, the uh, the wax ones, right. right, that you get in the mail. You used to get in the mail. Those don't really last that no. that long. Unless if you put them in the fridge, they last in the freezer. Right. So <laughs> that's uh, that's that's an issue. One thing we should point out, is safety wise, is that people are going to light the candles and then go out to parties and so on. They should be very careful not to leave the candles unattended. Right. So right. What a what a person can do in such a circumstance is that when a person if when a person lights, the person has in mind or speaks out that I'm only lighting it for half an hour, and after the half an hour is over, I don't. Only lighting it for half an hour after <coughs> sun after after, after the stars come out. After the stars come out, right. and after that, um, um, I'm planning to blow it out. Person can do can 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 do that, and then after the stars come out, they can blow it they out. They just they could blow them out, and then they can they, they can leave. leave. If yes. they're going to stay uh, in the house, they should make sure that it's in a safe, right. it's safe uh, right. setup. Right. So I don't think a person can just say I'm doing a mitzvah, so I don't have to worry yeah. about safety. Right. I mean, they, unfortunately, there are lots of lots of times when people light near the windows, so you're lighting near the drapes, um, uh, and sometimes it can be right. an issue. Person has to be very careful. Yeah. Moshe says, according to the Rambam, you should light the candles five minutes before Shkia. <coughs> well, <coughs> the, the Rambam, the Rambam, the Rambam does have. Uh, I mean, the, 
the Ramam does have a position which may be slightly different than the other than the other uh, Rishonim, but um, to a certain extent, again, um, in Chutz Laaretz, we're relating inside, um, even though the, the times that I mentioned are ideal, but in Chutz Laaretz, it's, it's less uh, less um, less of an absolute prerogative that one has to light a time. You know, most most people do not light it, and especially in Chutz Laaretz, most people are coming home from work and they're lighting at six or seven. So you're saying there's less of a reason to light like the Rambam? Because I mean, because the time goes later. I see, because because uh, lighting inside anyway for the people at, at home, home right. and they're still in, home. In Chutz in Eretz Yisrael, the lighting is for the people outside, so that's why there's more of a there's uh-huh. more of a necessity to light at the right time. In Chutz it's also a nice thing to light at the right time, which again, according to Rav Aaron, is 20 minutes after sunset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a nice thing if a person can do that, but um, since the, 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 in Chutz Lawit, the main the main a point of lighting is for people in the house, so it only works if people are in the house. If no one's home yet, then uh, you know, you're missing, you're right. missing the point of lighting. There's a famous about. story with Nachum, what was the story yeah. again, that he didn't light at the right, at the right at, at sun, at, 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 when the stars came out, and who asked him, the Chavetz Chaim, who asked him? The Chavetz, they said, the Chavetz Chaim asked him, why aren't you lighting? He said, well, I'm waiting for my wife to come home, because she likes to see me light. Um, and he was still fulfilling the mitzvah right. because he was lighting uh, um, inside for the people yeah. at home. But he wasn't doing it exactly. At the, maybe he, if, if it was, his wife would have been home, he would have lit earlier. But he wanted her to enjoy the candles. It makes a lot of sense in Chutzlar. It's because, again, in Chutzlar, the, the, the lighting is mm-hmm. primarily for the people of your bias. Uh, right. We're not lighting outside in the street like they, like they do in Eretz Yisrael. Right. So therefore, it makes sense to wait till the people of your bias are there, you know. Um, so, the, so yes, a person should, uh, you know, that, that would be a fine thing to do, to wait until until people are home. Ron says, oil lift lasts depending on the amount of oil used. Pre-contained oil lights are one thing, but many use lifts that pour one poison oil. One does need to assure, assure that it burns long enough by using sufficient oil. That's correct. You should put in enough uh, that, it, that it lights um, for at least a half an hour after the stars come out. Gil says, I think he compared this to Nero Chaba that they were there for Shalom, Shalom Bias. That's right. He was saying that his wife enjoys it, so he would do it a little bit later. Um, if you have a Meyer of Minion daily, should you light your candles before Meyer of Moshe is asking? That's, a, that's the $64,000 question. Should you have a Meyer first, or should you light your candles? That's a, this, uh, right. some sort of so again, if you're if you're if you're following Ravarans on that 20 minutes after Shkia, right? Then you're for sure lighting before Marav this day because the Marav day would have a man that says so. Um, so if people are doing following that minic, they can. Um, people are following that minic should uh, should light trust. In general, in general, the even most people they like when they come home from work, and then they eat something and then they go out for Marav. So, uh, so that's so fine. Practically speaking, it's, it's right. just whatever. As soon as a person can, person should. Okay, so what's the latest time to light Hanukkah candle? Somebody is out, uh, and they come back to they come back home um, late, and, and so they come home at uh, three o'clock in the morning. Right. So can they light then? Right. So again, in, in Eretz Yisrael, does more does halachically does more of a best thing to light on time. In Chutz Laaretz, where a person's lighting for his family, so then a person should light when it's around. Um, now there's this concept which I mentioned about lighting when there's still people outside. The tichla regel menashuk. You should light before the before people sleep. That before their streets are empty. So um, that, that does apply. That's a, that they, an ideal person should should try and uh, if a person's not lighting on time, a person should light before before that period in America. I don't know, 10, 30, 11. I would think people are still around. Right. So should try and light before, even if they're even if the, uh, the ideal thing would be to light on to light again. Uh, at the beginning of right. this month, if they can't light then, they should light whenever they can. Um, <coughs> um, preferably for that, if a person's traveling um, and a person's coming home late. So again, the, the, primar- the primary the primary or the primary um, showing of the miracle is for one's family. So if a whole family's traveling and they're all coming home late, as long as they're all up, then um, then it's fine. Again, ideally, a person should try for. Now, what, what if he comes home and everybody's sleeping? So there, the Mishabura says. That he should wake some some, some to uh, right. to have them stand around while he lights the candles. Right, right. Uh, you 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 should uh, arrange that beforehand. I, think. I don't think so. Man. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they'd appreciate being uh, woke up in the middle of the night without uh, 
without uh, right. prior warning. Right. But yeah, a person should do that. A person's I, I, I never fully understood that because if I'm by myself in my own house, I live by myself, let's say, so I like without anybody around. So how come if I'm if I'm in a home with a family, so I need to have some people around? Why, why is it any worse than if I'm home um, by myself? Well, he's talking about a case where a person's coming home after midnight. So if a person's by oneself, there is actually a discussion in the post about a person can really light after that time. Um, so uh, in order to avoid that question, um, um, if a person has other people that, that see the light, then a person can for sure light. So uh, the mission board is suggesting that if you wake someone up, then uh, they need it then. And if it's already that late, it's already after midnight, and it's already after the time that, that no one's in the street. So by waking someone uh -huh. Out, you, you avoid so you're saying it's not so by myself that I can like that late either. Well, oh. You know, it's the evidence. I had a question, just uh, this is coming to my mind now. I had a question. Someone called me and they, they, were, on a, they were going to Israel, so they were traveling uh, from the United States, and they, they, they were leaving, let's say, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. so, so they couldn't light that early. That was too early for them to light, and they had they they, they wanted to know how they should light. So um, lighting on the plane is not an option. No. Not if you want to, uh, you know, uh, continue <laughs> continue your trip. Uh, so that's uh, that's not an option. The other only thing I could tell her was to light, to have someone go into her uh, her house no, exactly and make sure. a shliach, make a messenger to right. light. But for some reason that was not possible. Perhaps there was no one around that could do that, right. and I didn't have any real, uh, real good uh, option. So, a person, when you make your, when you make your, uh, f when you make flights, you make your travel plans, definitely take into account, you know, the, 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 where, where, where you're going to live. I was once going, I once traveled to Israel on Hanukkah, and, uh, but my family was home, and they, they lit, they lit, and they, right, I fulfilled right. the so obligation that in that way. I didn't right. do it myself. Let's take some of these, these so comments. Says, somebody writes to me, yeah. well, Osma holds that one's wife will be upset if she's not present, even in Israel, I should wait. So that's the different opinions. You know, uh, they say in the name of Rabbi Yashif that he didn't hold that way. Um, hard to know for sure, but um, you know, mm -hmm. if a person was in Israel, a person would need to, uh, need to investigate that because there does seem to be different opinions about that. But, so, in, but in Chutzlar, it's either way a person can wait for their wife. I see. Can you blow the candles out after this man of the half now? Let's say Moshe is asking, let's say you didn't have that condition when you lit them to have in mind to blow them out. A person should preferably not blow them out. Should not. A person should. A person should have that in mind. Uh -huh. a person should have that. In mind. Okay. If you're traveling overseas, what's the earliest time to light the candles? That would be. Um, Again, like you, you already said, it doesn't really matter where you are. It's 20 minutes after sunset. So. Well, well, well. No. He means if you're traveling. He means you're traveling overseas. So. So you won't be. So you won't be home. Okay. So you're leaving. Let's say three o'clock or three, 3 p.m. So you can light at Plaga so Mincha. Like so, you know, if you need to, you can light at the Plaga Mincha, but then you've got to put enough oil in that it right. lasts till half an hour after after night. Um, right. And again, if you're traveling and you're putting that much oil in, uh, I'd be hesitant to do that if you're going to leave. If, you're no, gonna one's leave. Ever, if no one's going to be home. Right, you're going to leave the house empty. Right. You're going to light the candles, leave the house empty. Oh, but maybe you're lighting candles and there's still people there. Right, then, then yes. Then if uh, you're person needs it, they can right. light up the Plaga Mincha. And what time is Plaga today? <laughs> I have it on, uh, I have it, uh, um, somebody can tell us, I'm sure in front of their computer, what time is the Plag HaMincha today, which it would be, let's say, in Baltimore, New York, what is the earliest time you can, you can light the candles today under, if you're under uh, duress? So um, you wrote over here, you know, the invention of electricity allows people to stay out later. Does this affect it? Yes, it does. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, since, since people are people, people are out later, right. so they can light. You can light later and still be considered to be right. lighting in the proper right. time. Right. Except in Baltimore, people still go to sleep very early. <laughs> it's not, if you're from New York and you come to Baltimore, you're going to wonder where everybody is after nine o'clock. <laughs> in Baltimore, people don't walk in the streets; they, they drive. People don't walk the streets. Also, that's true. Um, Okay, Arlene asks. Yeah, plug is at 3:44. There we go. Uh, 4:44 or 4:41. Okay, or 3:31 or 4:27. Okay, so that would be. So let's say in New York, the absolute earliest time you could light would be 3:31 if you were under duress. 
And that's what we do on, on Friday, right? We light, uh, but because we can't light on Shabbos. Well, Friday is a little bit better because generally during the week, it's a bit of the kind of thing to, right, light, before, to light before for the right time. Right. Um, on Shabbos, that's the Chazal on the so that's Right, that, that, that must be the way that it was set up because obviously we're not going to light Shabbos right. candles on, on, right. on, on Shabbos. Um, if Arlene asks, if a Svardi son-in-law who only lights one, Chanuk, one Chanukah, like right. visits his wife's Ashkenazi parents. How many? Oh, oh no, she likes she likes one Chanukiah. Right. I, I didn't see right. the word. Right. She likes one one menorah. He likes one menorah normally at home. Right. Okay. Now he goes he goes to visit. He married uh, an Ashkenazi girl, and and he goes to visit her home. So how many Chanukiot or menorah should be lit? I have to ask his father for the sake. Okay, you should ask. So, yeah, if you're Swati, you have to ask. You know, right? Swati have different, have different uh, uh, customs. Different customs. Okay, okay, that's a fair answer. Um, uh, what about taking a red eye flight at 1 a.m. heading east, not sleeping from the departure point, and landing past sunrise? Well, you could take a 1 a.m. flight, that's not so bad because then you can light uh, before you head to the airport. You know? Uh, hold on, I'm trying to figure this out. He's leaving from. California, he means, not from Israel, right? The red eye usually was from California at 1 a.m. and he's heading east and he's going to land uh, six hours uh, six hours later, right. very early in the morning. Right, so in this but case, he's landing past sunrise. In this case, he's leaving at 1 a.m. It's not such a problem. He'll but he can, light, he can light before he leaves. leaves. Right, the question, the problem is more when people are leaving that, the flight's leaving at 10 or, or something earlier than that. You know, where again, if the, if the flight's leaving before, if they have to leave their house before flight uh-huh. Amimcha, and then and and they're flying far away where they're going to travel to the night, then they really have a problem that there's uh, there's no good time to light. Right, right. Um, they should really not uh, not book a ticket like that that time. Okay, let's move on to another question, right, Frankel. What can I eat um, before lighting Hanukkah candles? So, can you eat your turkey dinner right. before lighting the Hanukkah candle? You have to wait till after. Right. So does does <coughs> there's um, um, th- there is a problem, and there's a way around the problem. The problem is again that when person when there's a mitzvah of, of lighting Hanukkah candles, a person should not is not meant to eat before they do the mitzvah. When we say don't eat, that usually refers to bread and azonos or something substantial. If the person is just having uh, fruit or drink, then that's fine. That's fine. Um, if a person wants to have a whole meal, or a person, especially if a person wants to wash, so then the way around it is to, is, um, is to have someone else that they appoint as their showman, which means that this other person will be the person to remind them in case they get so engrossed in their meal and they, they, that, that there's somebody there who's going to remind them that they have, a person doesn't have anyone around. So it seems in the contemporary post skin that, uh, that, um, that if, it, if necessary, a person could have um, an alarm clock be their showman too. Right, so, but that other person can't be eating with them also because then it doesn't right, help. Right. So that's somebody who's not joining a meal to remind you. It's particularly relevant when people make chasnas. So I go to chasna, I see. like I'm going to travel to New York to mm-hmm. go to chasna. I'm leaving my house before I'm lighting. I'm not going to get back till midnight. So how can I eat at the chasna? So, and even if I'm traveling with somebody, that person is also eating, that doesn't mm-hmm. help. So, um, you know, again, if a person needs to, I think the person, the person can set, set their cell phone to uh, alarm to ring and that will work as the show now. Uh-huh. Okay, so he can make some sort of sign for himself or reminder that he's going to have to light the candle. It's got to be some sign that he's definitely going to see. Like a mm-hmm. show, a person is going to come over to you and remind you. Right. You know, just to write down a piece of paper, I don't think it's sufficient. Okay, fair enough. Um, let me just take a minute out to, to, uh, to mention that we're here in the Starkey offices. I'm Rabbi Tzvi Goldberg, and this is Rabbi Mordechai Frankel. We're, we're, this webinar is held every last Wednesday of the month at 12 noon. Uh, and if you want to sign up for our alerts at star-k.org, you will be alerted to the topic and to the t- exact time if there's any change, uh, which sometimes we do make changes because of the, uh, the umptive holidays and so on. Um, and uh, if you want to dial in, it's 218-895-1203 passcode 2020. If you have questions during during the week or any, any other time, you can call us at 410-484-4110. Again, 
4110. You can email us at info at star-k.org. Or if you want to go directly to Rabbi Frankel, it's halacha, H-A-L-A-C-H-A at S-T-R dash S-T-A-R star dash K dot O-R-G. Um, Gil, Gil says, yeah, what does Gil say? He says that he heard in the name of Rav Bosna that if Bosna is going to a Hasna where he's going to have to come home, so then he does not need a shower. So yes, there are those that do suggest that. It's not, uh, other people can disagree. But uh, since that is a possibility, yeah, that's why I feel that there's also a discussion where the setting of alarm clock can count as a showman. But since there's, you know, between, that's why I feel that uh, since, anyway, since anyway, there are arguments to be made. coming that, home. That there are arguments to be made that when you read a chasm, you don't need a showman at all. So that's why a person can at least rely on the opinions that an alarm clock counts as a showman. It's a very easy thing to do. We all have cell phones. We can all set our cell phones to ring. It's not a, so I think that's sort of a good way to get Also, how start. about if uh, when he comes home, he puts, before he leaves, he leaves his menorah right by the door. So when he walks in, he'll see it right away, or he, he, he sort of blocks his access, so he has to bump into it, and he'll, it's another type of reminder. Okay, um, Zev says, of course, there's a very old dateline problem. Yes, how many, uh, we're not going to get into okay. it. No, that's no, a little, that uh, people's heads start to spin. Try, try to avoid going over the dateline or something like that. When you, uh, right, avoid going over the dateline, that's the best advice. Um, uh, we do have an article online, let me mention, about Dateline. I'm, I'm, I suppose he, that it must cover some of the Hanukkah yes, issues right. also. Uh, Rabbi Heber wrote an article about Dateline issues, and you can find that at the uh, Kashrus Currents archives on our, on our <coughs> website. Right. It's also worthwhile pointing out that when it comes to eating the four Hanukkah candles, there's also a discussion post a half hour before lighting that um, preferably a person should not wash. Um, and have bread um, or mizonos in half hour before lighting either, unless they have a shomer. Mm -hmm. Some people avoid making weddings on Hanukkah because of a lighting problem. Yeah. Like, uh, Is that really? I never, I never so realized that. Right? right? I got married on Hanukkah, so I'm, oh. I'm not the right person. So you're not the one, well, <laughs> right. but you didn't set the date. That's true. <laughs> Wait a second. So we want to take this opportunity to wish Rabbi Frank <laughs> a, a mazel tov his uh, upcoming anniversary. Somebody told me, I don't know if this is true, but somebody told me they were good to go marry on Hanukkah. So uh, there's precedent for it. I see. Okay. Maybe because, not because you necessarily have a problem, but because the, get, you, you, the you put the guests right. into a right. uh, little bit of a dilemma of where they're going to uh, go in life. The chasm also has something of an issue where should he like Right, the, 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 right. right. the, the, the chasm and the kala, right. They right. come to the chasm the very early, right. and they leave very late. Right. And then, you know, they right. go wherever, and then how they, where are they going to like, right. But, okay. Um, okay. What type of oils and candles should I use? So the, the Gemara says that a person should use, uh, ideally, should use an oil which burns well and gives off a nice flame. So um, the custom is to use olive oil. It doesn't actually say in the Gemara that it needs to be olive oil, but that's what generally people use. The mitzvah was the mitzvah was the, uh, the, the, the historically the, the times of the Chashmon oil was the base of it was olive oil. So people use olive oil. Now, now, the olive oil does not really need to be olive oil, which particularly has a hechsha. There is, if you go to a store, if you go to Judaica stores, they sell this olive oil, which has, which has a hechsha, and they charge quite a bit of money for it. It's really unnecessary. You can use regular olive oil, too. <coughs> in, fact, the, in fact, it's probably better to use regular olive oil, because the olive oil that they sell in the, in the Judaica stores is low-quality olive oil, which they can't sell for food. That's why they sell it over here. And they charge money for it. And uh, olive oil, which is some of the stores, is higher quality olive oil. And if anything, it's going to burn. I mean, it's not going to burn worse. If anything, it'll burn nicer. So, I actually have something to say about that. Oh, um, okay. um, I did some investigation last year about that. About you, people sell uh, sell um, extra virgin olive oil, especially for for Hanukkah, mm. which is more, much more expensive, and people like to use it. But I spoke to one of our contacts. We, we certified quite a few olive oil companies, and um, I discussed the issue with him. Now, they don't generally care how things burn. Then that's not part of their uh, what they study, but they do have some insight into it. And um, and it, it came out that it's very likely that the extra virgin olive oil it has all sorts of uh, uh, components that that make it taste better. But also make it smoky and make it not give that give necessarily a very bright and clear light. Well, if you have the cheaper uh, refined olive oil, which is pomace oil, and which 
in, in, in the refining process, it removes all of the good tasting components, and it doesn't. It's not as high quality, but it, 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 he, he he sort of indicated that probably would make it burn even brighter. So actually, it's funny that it's, if you're looking for a real bright light, it, it, it's possible that the cheaper refined oils may burn brighter. So um, my, my, my feeling is not, you know, not necessarily to look for the, the, the extra uh, virgin. I, I agree with you, it doesn't require certification. Right. It's really not, unless it's we're from Israel, then it would uh, require a certification because of the, 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 the Teruma issues. But um, I think that when people look for extra virgin refined, extra virgin olive oil, it's not necessarily going to help it burn brighter. Right, so um, we're going to Rabbi Yosh prefers oil fit for eating, ideally. Yeah, that uh, it's not mentioned anywhere really, but yes, I believe that it's true that Rabbi Yosh knows it holds it's a hidden mitzvah. If it's be... I I heard from a good source that Rabbi Yosh Rabbi Yosh, that he used to use what we call shemen zay zoch, really zoch, which means like in in the in the base of Mikdash, what they used to use they that they would they would uh, press an olive, you get a drop of oil. And that's it, and that's all you would use. And then the rest of the oils would be used for the menachos. They would use for something else. It takes a lot of olives to do that. And in, in, in the base of Migdash, they did that. I, I've heard, I heard from a pretty good source that that's what he used to do. But I don't think he was recommending that for everybody. No, no, that would have been it's very expensive. I mean, one person, I mean, how many people can do that? I mean, I've heard that too, but uh, you know, Ramosha didn't do that. So right. We, don't, we, don't, we haven't heard about that being a. Right. I don't think he was recommending that right. for everybody right. either. There's some kind of heads off that he felt right. was appropriate for him. Right. So, uh, again, I, I, I had the argument that the, the cheap oils actually are better for candles. If anybody does a study about it, of, of comparing the, the oils, if you can let me know how, how it, if any, maybe we have some experts in our audience on, on how the oils uh, burn, it would be interesting to hear about that. Um, uh, Zev says, when buying pre-made oil cups, avoid ones made in China, with or without a hechsher. I did it once and it burned poorly. Then I found out olive oil is actually ordinary vegetable oil. Okay, that's it. You would be, you'd fulfill the myth with that. But but, well, you'd hope if it has a hechsher, it would be took care of that. But, ah. uh, you know, unless it's, anyway, it's a stock A, I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, if it, you know, assuming it has a hechsher from a reputable people, you assume they took care of that. I think it's, you know, if a person can't use olive oil, a person can use other oils, like you said, and you, know, you could use any, any, really any oil which burns well. <coughs> um, or many people just use candles, which is also fine. The person who can't use, doesn't want to use olive oil, they can use candles. The thing which the person do not like is that they're, they're not very enthusiastic about, um, um, you know, electrical, uh, just electricity, just bulbs. Even though by, by Shabbos, um, again, ideally, a person would use regular candles by, by Shabbos, it seems that many persons seem to feel that if a necessary person can be Yotze <coughs> with, um, you know, with bulbs, um, like flashlights, but um, the Hanukkah they seem to be less, uh, less. Uh, it's less clear cut. You know, there's a special that it should be. <coughs> it should be something where you prepare a candle and with, or, an, or an olive oil, which is which is when set aside at the beginning to last half an hour, <coughs> um, and it burns and and the thing itself burns and gets used up. Um, you know, the, 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 that's not you don't have that by uh, by electric. Uh, nothing's nothing's burning getting used up by. Like just these it's being created right. as, 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 time, as, as, as every as second it's right. being created. Right. So the person don't like that. So the person should so the person should use either oil or candles, uh, but not an electric vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, David says in Israel they forge the certifications, and um, I know that to be true that to be true because the Israeli rabbinate puts out a, 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 a alert every year with um, right. a list of dozens and dozens of forged. Certifications and uh, it's, it's 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 it is they admit that it's a big problem. Right. Gil makes a good point of here. What if the, what if the electric one is battery operated? Then it would get used up. Yes, that is an argument that it could be that if, if you go if you have to use an electric one because you're in a place which you can't light a candle, um, then yes, a battery operated one would be better than a, than a plug-in one. But um, you know this is these are all you know uh, not clear cut and therefore if a person has any opportunity. Person should try to avoid it. And should avoid using flashlight. <laughs> right. And if again, if a person did take a, if a person was on the airplane 
Yeah, yeah, nothing better, nothing better to do with it. They have the candlelight candle, so then yes, a flashlight would be uh, be something. Yeah, but, and something it, is better than nothing. But they shouldn't think that they are. <laughs> uh, that, that's that's right. you know that, that's a good that's solution. Not, it's not a good solution. Not a good not solution. solution. Right. Right. Many customers do not want to not feel like that's right. very wise. Where in my, let's see if we can get through till number five here, Rabbi Franco, because we're going. Uh, okay. uh, we're getting a little um, behind. Um, uh, where where in my house should I put my menorah? Right. So again, in, in Eretz Israel, the classic thing to do was to light it out in the street, uh, to, or you know, or, by the door, by the doorway, to the, by the doorway right. to the street, you know, right. like uh, <coughs> or the doorway to the chutz, or right. the courtyard. Um, many people do that in Israel, some don't. But in Chutzla, it's generally we don't do that um, because of the because danger. Because uh, the danger, even though nowadays in America it's not really dangerous, but still, um, it's not something that uh, the people around us would particularly appreciate having lit flames in the street. So we look at it as something which uh, you know that would not uh, not make a you know would would it somewhat in, in, you know uh, endanger our good relationships with our with our mm -hmm. non-Jewish neighbors. So people light inside. The ideal place to light inside to the, the, the is to light uh, um, um, at a window which is facing the street. So that, that way, at least the people in the street can see the lights. <coughs> um, that's that's what many people do. And not not all people have a window in the right place. Uh, if you don't have anywhere to light, which is if you don't have any window facing the street, so then yeah, then a person could light by their doorway, um, the 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 tefach next to the doorway, uh, you know, the mezuzahs on the right, and then they they put their Hanukkah candles on the left. Um, a person could do that too, but uh, preferably if a person if a person has a window which looks out onto a street, a person should um, should light there. Um, person, if a person, the person, if a person is lighting by their doorway, they should not just put the menorah down on the ground. It should be, you know, because it's meant to be more than three tefachim off, off the ground. We're talking about uh, say ten and a half inches at least. Right, right. So they should have, they should have like some kind of table which it sits mm -hmm. on. Um, right, right, right behind me, one look about if you live in an apartment building and you're lighting all the way up on the 15th floor. Um, so we we can assume that people in the street can't really see your uh, I mean, it's because you're more than uh, 40 feet above the ground. I can't right. see that far. But if there's another part of building across from you, right, right, uh, and so the that people, you, so then the people in the other 15th floor on the other building were able to look across. It, then, then it makes some sense to light in the window. Otherwise, it just light in the uh, on, on the, you know, right, on the table. Right. Exactly. Uh, or by the door. Yeah. By the door. Or by the door. Right. Okay. Gil wants to go back to the. Um, uh, uh, to the battery operated. Is there any difference between LED lights and halogen or incandescent? Yeah. Incandescent yeah. would be that certainly would better. Be better yeah. If one has to light with electric, can I make a bracha? No. no, no, no definitely no. not. It's, it's very, very difficult. Or shechianu? No. I don't think, right. I think so. Well, you can make, maybe you can make shechianu if you don't like any candle. Yeah, okay. Um, Okay, next. Um, where in my house? In what order should I light the candles? Right. So there are different customers about this. Person should follow their custom. <coughs> the remark says, and it's, I guess the most prevalent custom is if you put your candles in the window. So, <coughs> so, so the first candle on the first night would be on the rightmost uh, side of the of the of the menorah, and you'd light that. And then the next day, you put and one candle there, one candle to the left of it. And you'd start lighting the the new candle first, and then you'd move towards the right, um, and then till the, till the eighth day when you're lighting then on the left side, and you're, and you're and you're moving towards the right as you light the all eight candles. So that's the <coughs> that's what the Ramah says. Um, the Gro has a different custom. The Tas has a different custom. So um, there are a variety of customs out there of persons doing something differently than what I just said. Um, you know, it's quite possible that they're following one of the other and mm -hmm. again, according to the Ramah. That's how you do it. Okay. And uh, what should I do if my candles go out? Huh. Right. So generally, we have a rule. Just that, generally, the Gemara has a rule that uh, if they if they were lit properly and they go out, even even though they did not last for half an hour, there's no need to relight that. To, there's no need to relight them. You can just leave it. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, that's assuming that uh, again, the Mishnah says that if they go out before, you, if the before you finish lighting them, you know, unless if you have five candles and you lit the first one and it goes out before you got to the fifth one. So that no time did you have all five lighting, then he says that one should relight it. Um, um, or if like you started lighting it and, the, and it didn't catch well and it never started burning properly, you should relight it. But other than that, assuming you went up a show gig by mistake, 
um, if um, if you lit them all and they were all lit at one time and then it went out by mistake, you can leave it even if it went out after two or three minutes. It's fine. You know, you can leave it. You don't have to relight it. That's assuming it went out for sure. Okay, uh, Most people would relight it because they want to have it. Uh, yeah, because there's nothing wrong with right, relighting it. Right. It's, it's just not necessary. Um, <coughs> you know, there's also a question. That it should be. It should at least have. That should at least be in a situation where. It has the potential to last for half an hour, even if it does go out. So it had the potential to light. If you light it in a place, if you light it outside in a place which is very windy, and there's no way it's going to make it for half an hour, so that's worse. Right. Also, if you're lighting, this becomes a problem on a Friday night when, uh, when let's say, it's it's towards the end of Hanukkah and there's lots of candles and lots of menorahs, and you're lighting with a uh, with a small colored right. candle, and so the heat that is generated in that area, the candles may only last for, for 10 minutes, 15 right. minutes. Right. Especially and, and on Friday night, you need to, to last, I mentioned before, right? You need to last, exactly. you light early, you need to last a half hour past the, the stars, the right. stars, when the stars come out, so it's like at least an hour and a half. Right. And so you're lighting with a little candle, there's no way, even if you light with a big candle, if, if, you, if you have a lot of candles and a lot of uh, menorahs, it's not going to last. Nowadays, I mean, they, they, they do sell these extra long candles. That's, that's right, but even extra long candles, if you light four or five or six extra <coughs> long candles and there's other people lighting around you, they, they may not last. You have to be careful. The colds of the candles are only Right, if you the freeze them. Yeah. Freeze them. Jay uh, says, points out that when you're lighting, according to the way you mentioned before with the Ramah, you light mm -hmm. the one on the left first and you keep going towards the right, you stand closer to the one that you're lighting so you don't have to pass over the candles with your hands. So that is, uh, that's an important point. And Ron and I see Tzvi are going back to the point of the, uh, the smoky, smoky olive oil that I mentioned before. I'll have to take some time to study that afterwards. It's all right. So if brisk is hold as a tin chashad if it blows out. You know, that, that, that's primarily near its straw. Which means, let's explain what that means. That means, means that, that goes people out. will be, people will think Right, that you didn't um, that you didn't light it. So even if it goes out and you don't have to relight it in terms of the Hanukkah candles, you should light it in order that people shouldn't suspect that you didn't light it at all. And that's primarily in it's a straw where you're lighting outside so people will, will will see that it's not lit. Um again, even then it's a chumra, not everyone agrees with that, you know, because it's quite common that you light it and it goes out. So why mm -hmm. do people suspect anything? But um you know, in 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 Chuslar, it's where the primary primary lighting is for the household and people saw you light, they were there when you lit. So I don't think that's such mm -hmm. a concern. So the brisk is you must relight it in Israel. In Israel, right. Uh -huh. But the other person in Israel say, I, I believe I'm not entirely sure, I believe with Shlomazal disagreed with that. Okay. Gil says relight without a bracha, I yeah, assume. Correct. Yeah, yes. correct, right. If it went out, um and uh, okay, there's some more discussion about the. I see we we opened up the Pandora's <laughs> box there about which oils are are, are best, and that, that's good. Um, please uh, please continue with the comments so we get some more information from people who know more. Um, when should I light on Erev Shabbos? I think we mentioned that before. Right. So we again, light we li right. before <coughs> before Shabbos. Right. Preferably after you daven in Mincha. Right. right. So that's the, that's the, just the one issue is that, uh, again, preferably a person should daven Mincha before they light. Um, if, they, if there's no minion, with the, if, they, if, they can't, if there's no tzibur, uh, with the, if they can't daven Mincha with the tzibur, I believe that davening Mincha with, uh, you know, with, with, ten, with ten people with the tzibur is, <coughs> is more important than this custom of lighting, of davening Mincha before lighting. So if the person lives in a place where the only Mincha that's available to them is after the lighting time. So then light, light first. Light but, but, but generally, most places, most places, most shuls, they try to make an early mincha, and mm -hmm. then people go a mincha first, and then they go light. Um, <coughs> and um, um, and again, they, they should, uh, like you said, that, that, that this is an important point that they need, especially towards the end of the, uh, the end of the days. You know, you have to make sure that the candles are going to be able to to stay to stay lit till half an hour after. Uh, stars come out, and especially at the end, you know, when there's when there's other heat generated, this must have taken some care to get the right, uh, right right handles. And on on Saturday night, Matzah Shabbos, should light. There, the question is: before you make Havdalah or after you make Havdalah? So, so the different customs, the different customs. Again, in the in the Reis Knesses, they, they light in they light in Shul. They have the customs to light before the Havdalah. To push off, right? To push off the, uh, the, the right taking out the Shabbos. If the person comes home, there are different customs. I think many people they uh, make Havdalah. <coughs> um, 
a dollar first and then they light. But uh, some people, some people, you know, do, do, do it. Mm -hmm. some people do the other way. The mishabura is not really whichever way you do is it good. Doesn't, it's different market. Should you know, women and children light Hanukkah candles? <coughs> right. So you know, the, the mishabura says that um, a married, you know, it, uh, let me just back up a second. Okay. <coughs> um, really, you only need one person in the household to light. Um, there's this concept of mahadrim and mahadrim that. Uh, at least Ashkenazim, that uh, you know, all the all the males um, <coughs> who are chayv in the midst of light. Um, one would think that then a woman should also light. She's also chayv in neiras chanik. They were also they also have the same obligation. The Mishnah Bros says that no, we say that uh, by a wife we say ishto kugupa. A wife is a wife and husband are like one unit, and when he lights, so then that covers her. And um, since she's not going, and since women don't light when they're married. So therefore, the customers develop that they don't like when they're single either, because they're not going to like when they're married. So uh, generally, again, they can light. Uh, at least, at least a single a single girl could light if she wants, and some single girls do light, and that's fine. You know, if she wants to light herself, she could. Uh, but many, um, you know, but um, <coughs> married women and many single women do not light, um, and that's also fine. If they want to light, it's fine. If they want, yeah. if a single, there is there, there is the uh, the uh, I believe it's the chamsof. That right. uh, behind them, and like that, uh, that the reason the custom developed was that women don't light was because they used to light out in the courtyard, and in the courtyard they have whole family standing around, and it wasn't considered to be modest if the woman would go up and light, and everybody is standing there watching them while they're lighting. Right. So therefore, the woman refrained from lighting and relied on on the men, the men to right. light. Right. Uh, that wouldn't apply so much if they're lighting in, in their home. Right. Right. I mean, I think it's important. The important point to, to point just to, to remember is that is that if the person, if the woman's alone and she's does not have a husband, then she does have to light. Women are, women are obligated in the mitzvah. It's just that they're either their father, if they're living in their father's house. Mm -hmm. then, the father, then, the, the, then the father lights the household if they're living in the husband's house, the husband lights. But if, <coughs> if a woman is alone, she, she, does, she does have an obligation to light. Right. And what about single girls in Israel for the year? That would be no different than a single girl in, uh, in a different city. Right. You know, right. It, Again, or she's you know, living in the same city. She lives on her own. She, right. does, she has an obligation right. to light. Right. Well, he's saying that, he's saying that you know, there, there is an argument to be made if she's, yeah. going, no, so if she's going to seminary for a year, there is an argument to be made that since... Uh, Father is supporting supporting her for the whole year. She's still considered oh, really? like just part of the household. But that's not a, you know it's a hard it's a, not not a very not such a compelling argument because the bottom line is is that she's not home for a whole year. So even though he's paying for her trip, but uh, she's not home for a whole year. So yes, well, I, I think the solve this problem. We should have the girls pay for themselves. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would that would get us out of the whole situation. Right, right. If but the uh, you know, but uh, no, I, I don't think we should rely on that. They should. Uh, Gil is asking, did you consider a brachal of atol if you do that? No, because then she, she no, because then she, if she it, makes no, no. She, she has intentions not to be yotze with the father, mm -hmm. just like uh, just like she, even when she lives at home, she can light as well, and not you know again the the mahadrim and the mahadrim is that every person lights mm -hmm. themselves. I see. So she can she can so she, she can, can light on on <coughs> on, on, on her own no right, problem. Right. Right. Um, okay. Last question: What should I do about lighting if I'm a guest in someone else's house on Hanukkah? Right. So you know, I mean, um. um that, to certain, that, that you know, that, that depends to a certain extent upon whether you have somebody lighting in your home for you. In other words, if I'm if I'm out of my house but I have somebody at home lighting, if my wife's if I'm if I'm not home but my wife lights for me, <coughs> so then she can light, she can light for me, or I can make a shliach to light for me in my house. Um, so that's you know, if there are people home, then I can do that. Um, <coughs> um, the problem with doing that is that then um, you know, I, I I'd like to. You know, and then I'm going to miss out in hearing the brachas. Um, so the other, uh, the, uh, so the other possibility, and especially if you don't have anyone lighting for you at home, in which case you really have a chiv to light, is if you're going to guest in someone's house, that you want to join their lighting. So the way to do it is to give them a nickel or a dime and say that you want to become a partner in the in the oil, and that way that way you become a partner in their lighting, and um, and then you should be there when they light and listen to the prophets and then you're a part. Then you know they're lighting. But about if he wants to light himself, <coughs> the guest. Um, yeah, he can do that too if he's if he's, have if he's, mind. Right, but no. only if he's only if he's like gonna eat there and sleep there that mm -hmm. night. You know, you know, so if he's if he's just if you're just going somewhere for a meal, right, and then you're going home, then he has to go then light you, at then home. Then you have to go light at home. Right. You can't. You know, if you're gonna be eating there and sleeping there. Then you can um, then you mm -hmm. can light that too. Well, that gets to the to the to the big question of where to light if you're traveling, if you're 
you're eating here and you're sleeping there and you're right and you're uh, you know you're you're, you're you're on the road which is something that people do but I, I don't think that we have right. time for so that if someone has that, that kind of situation if they feel free to contact us over here there are a lot of variables you know that's mm -hmm. uh, depends right. upon where you know um you know um what I'll say is that, you know, Shlomo Zaman does say, which is uh, what we're knowing, is that if a person, let's say I'm going to somebody's house for Shabbos, <coughs> so I'm sleeping there Friday night, so on Friday night I'm going to light in that person's house because I'm eating and sleeping there. Uh, Moti Shabbos, so Shlomo Zaman says that before I've left, I'm still part of their house, mm -hmm. so I can light there, um, you know, wait half an hour and then blow it out and then go home and then uh, one person can do that. Um, but so they're going somewhere for Shabbos, obviously they're going to light there. Before right. Shabbos, but they can even after light, Shabbos, they can still light even though they're going home, they can still light there since they've been there. That's what Shabbos says, mm -hmm. right, right? Is that only on Shabbos? How about on a no, no, any, 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 any night, any day? As long, but again, it has to be that you slept there for night, you mm -hmm. know, that you were actually part of that bite, you know, part of that household. If you're just going somewhere for a meal, you have to go home. Should go home. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. okay, I think we covered uh, a good amount, Rabbi Frankel. Thank you very much, and thank you all for joining us uh, on this era of Hanukkah. Uh, our next uh, webinar will be, God willing, in the end of, uh, let's see, January 1st is the next, well, no, 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 not that. Uh, December 25th no, is the next, that? December 25th is the next uh, last Wednesday we, of the we month. Come up on some good topic for, uh, and, uh, <laughs> right, we do have, uh, uh, we will, God willing, have a session on that day. Um, Star K is open for business on December 25th, uh, even though mo many of our companies are closed, but we are here and, uh, and we look forward to seeing you. Please remember that in the last Wednesday in February, February uh, 26th, the last Wednesday we'll have a special webinar uh, with the videos and with the pictures of, of, of uh, how to check your vegetables and fruits for insects. Because you can read it in a, in a guide, and you, but it doesn't give you the exact, you don't know exactly what you're looking for. You have to be able to see it up close, and, uh, and we'll be able to help you with that. Uh, if you want to get a recording of this, you can look uh, soon enough. Our dedicated Starcase staff will put it up at kosher classes, K-O-S-H-E-R-C-L-A-S-S-E-S dot O-R-G. And also, we do have a YouTube uh, channel, so I think you can go onto YouTube and search, search for Star K. Of course, we don't take responsibility for everything else that YouTube uh, will suggest to you, so be careful over there. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Have a very happy Hanukkah. Freilich Hanukkah. Take care. Be well.